Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. So it is almost fall in the Midwest. Uh, I know those of you in other parts of the world or country that are warmer might be a little bit jealous, <laughs> but here the temps are starting to get a little bit cooler. And so today I thought I would share with you some of my favorite fall recipes. So these are recipes that I have been making for years and years. So they are definitely tried and true. Today I am going to be showing you how to make my favorite version of Crock-Pot Beef Stew, which is actually a recipe called Park City Stew. I know that I've shared this on my channel before, um, but I thought it would be fun to have a dedicated recipe video for it. It's super easy if you're busy during the day, you throw everything in the crock pot in the morning and you have awesome beef stew uh, at the end of the day to have for dinner. I'm also going to be sharing a recipe for veggie pizza, and this is more of an appetizer. So this is like the traditional Midwest party food. It is crescent rolls with a dill ranch spread with chopped veggies and a little bit of shredded cheese on the top. This is a total crowd pleaser. It is great to have as an appetizer either with this meal or you could also make it for a football game or a party or anything else that you'd want to use it for. It makes a head well so you can make it up to a day before and it's totally delicious and very customizable to whatever you want to put on it. The last thing that I'm showing you is some pumpkin bars. So this is another recipe that I've been making for years and years. I love pumpkin bars with cream cheese frosting. I always make them in the fall. It's just a recipe that screams fall to me. So I hope you enjoy these recipes. But before we get started, I also wanted to mention that today's video is a collaboration with Jess O'Donohue. She has a channel here on YouTube. I will be linking it down below. If you guys don't already follow her, you need to like ASAP. Um, I discovered her videos like a few months back and I just think that she's one of those YouTubers that is going to have a lot of success. She is so real and so relatable. Her and her husband are so cute and they share the most awesome food videos. She also does decor videos and shop with me's and grocery hauls and a lot of content that is similar to what I do. And so um, when I found her on YouTube, I was like, we have to be friends because I feel like we're soul sisters. <laughs> so once you're done watching this video, I hope that you go over and check out her video. She's also sharing three fall favorite recipes. Um, so again, I'll have that linked in the description box below and make sure that if you're not already, subscribe to her channel. If you are new to my channel and you're coming over from Jess's channel, hi, my name is Jen and I'm a full-time working mom and I like to share all about food and uh, some of my family as well. So let's get into these recipes. I know you guys will enjoy them. So the first thing that we're going to get started on is the veggie pizza and if you haven't seen this recipe before it was a classic uh, midwest recipe at potlucks growing up i can remember having this at like church potlucks and being so excited when someone would bring it because i loved it so much so i will link the original recipe down below that i sort of use as uh, the basis you can um, customize the spread part of it if you like like more dill or more garlic um, and I'll tell you that here in a second so first we're gonna start by taking two cans of crescent rolls and flattening those out on a cookie sheet Connor is helping me here with his little rolling pin and essentially you just want to push all the seams together so that it just makes one sort of um, big crust and if you can find the crescent roll sheets that aren't perforated those are even better to use i got mine at aldi so i did not have access to those but if you can find those those are great too so while the crust is baking in the oven i'm going to go ahead and make the spread or what will kind of be the sauce for the pizza even though it's not really a sauce it's more like a veggie dip so into my mixing bowl i put one soft softened block of neufchatel cheese i'm using the one third less fat cream cheese, and also a couple tablespoons of light sour cream. I'm also adding some ranch mix, some um, freshly chopped dill, and I'm going to beat that up with a hand mixer. I would recommend either using a stand mixer 
or a hand mixer for this just because cream cheese can be hard to mix and it um, is a lot easier if you use that. So once you get that mixed up, go ahead and adjust the seasonings per your taste. You can add garlic if you want. You can add salt, pepper, whatever you think that it needs. And then I'm just going to put the spread on top of the cooled crescent rolls. These are um, cooked through now and you want to make sure that you cool them completely before you put the spread on otherwise it will make the cream cheese melt and that is not good you do kind of want to make this ahead of time I would say at least a couple hours ahead of time you could probably make it the day before and it would still be fine but I wouldn't make it much longer ahead than that just so it doesn't get soggy so I'm just using an offset spatula to evenly spread the cream cheese mixture on the crescent rolls and next we will put the toppings on So I sprinkled a little bit of finely shredded cheddar cheese on top of the spread. You don't want to put too much of this on. If you do, then your veggies will not stick and adhere to the cream cheese and everything will kind of like fall apart when you cut it. So just add a little bit and next I'm adding some finely chopped red bell pepper. I'm also going to add some cucumber and this recipe is super flexible. So you can pretty much use any veggies that you have in your fridge hanging out waiting to be used. It's a great way to use those up. I'm also going to add some finely chopped broccoli. I think that is a staple on this particular veggie pizza appetizer. I also had a couple radishes in the fridge so I'm going to go ahead and chop those up. The key here is that you can really use any vegetable, but you do want to chop them into small pieces because you're going to be cutting this into squares. And obviously if the pieces are too large, it will make that more difficult. I'm also going to sprinkle some green onion on. You could also use chives if you wanted or chopped red onion. And then I also think that tomatoes are really good on this. So I'm adding some halved cherry tomatoes. Um, I can't remember exactly what the original recipe used. I am just providing that as a reference for you guys to make the spread because I've made this so many times that I don't even really use a recipe anymore. Um, but I know it's nice to have a roadmap obviously to go off of if you've never made it before. The last thing that I'm adding is some black olives. I love sliced black olives on this. If you don't like black olives, you could leave those off or you could add green olives or just really whatever you want. This is a great appetizer, like I said, to make ahead of time. It's great for football if you're having people over. Um, it's just really like fresh and delicious and it's a total crowd pleaser. Even my kids love it. So here's what it looks like when it's done. You can pop that in the fridge until you're ready to serve it. And then I just use a regular pizza cutter to cut this into pieces. Depending on how many people you're having over, you can cut this into as small or large of pieces that you want. Um, but this also made a great appetizer on this particular night for our uh, beef stew. We kind of use this as our first course, but like I said, it is great for parties as well. So definitely make that if you guys haven't before. Would totally recommend it. It is so, so good. So the next recipe that I'm going to show you guys is definitely one of my fall favorites. This is for beef stew. So what I have here in my crock pot is some uh, roast that I cut into cubes. I also have some cream of chicken soup, some cream of celery soup, one can of tomato sauce. I also have some um, onion soup mix, one onion that I'm going to chop up, some bay leaves, and then also some Worcestershire sauce. So to your slow cooker, you wanna add your beef. So I went ahead and thawed out an arm roast that we had in the freezer and chopped that up into larger cubes. But if you wanted to use beef stew meat, you could totally do that as well. I sprinkled over the top the um, onion soup mix. You can get like either you know the Walmart brand, generic brand or name brand, whatever. They all taste the same to me. Next, you're going to put the two cans of cream soup on top. If you don't like cream of celery, you really don't taste it in this recipe. Um, you could probably substitute cream of mushroom or another can of cream of chicken if you wanted to, but I always use it and honestly, I can't even taste the celery taste. I sprinkled in some Worcestershire sauce and next I'm going to chop up my onion really fine and get that in there as well. 
Uh, the recipe link down below is for Park City Stew is actually what the recipe is called. I have been making this for years and years and it is the best recipe for slow cooker beef stew that I have found. I have made it so many times. I love to start making it, you know, in the fall and winter months when it gets cold again. And it's great to leave on low all day while you're at work or while you're busy and you'll have a hot dinner. Now I will acknowledge this does look a little gross when you're mixing it up. And the first time I made this, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? This looks disgusting. We're not going to like this, but you'll see at the end, this turns into a nice like brown gravy. I don't know how it does it, but just bear with me here. I promise you it's good. I mixed in a bag of baby carrots. Next, I'm going to throw in my bay leaves. So if you're going to be cooking this all day, you could go ahead and chop your potatoes up now and add those. I actually wasn't sure if I was going to make mashed potatoes with this or put the potatoes in. Plus, I was also cooking it on high for six hours instead of low for eight to 10 hours. So at this point, I'm not adding in the potatoes, but you could totally do that if you follow the recipe. Um, that is going to cook on high um, until it is nice and bubbly. And I, I can't remember actually what I was doing on this day. I feel like I was out um, and about. This was a weekend that I was making this. Actually, I actually think it was a Sunday because you can see my Land of the Free, Home of the Mustache, uh, Andy Reid Chiefs shirt. Go Chiefs. <laughs> that I was wearing. Uh, but once I got home, I decided that I was just going to throw my potatoes in and crank up the heat and let those cook through. So I took four russet potatoes, washed them, peeled them, and then I'm just cutting them into small cubes. And then I'll go ahead and add those um, into the beef mixture. Sorry, my kids are touching the camera there. <laughs> Um, but like I said, you could leave the potatoes out and do mashed potatoes. You could also put them in at the beginning, which I would probably recommend because this was barely done in time for dinner. Either way, it is really good. So I went ahead and cubed up the potatoes. I'm going to stir those in and then let that cook until the potatoes are tender. All right, so here is what this dish looks like once it is done cooking. You can see that it's nice and bubbly. If you wanted to, you could use a crock pot liner if you are bothered by that burnt stuff around the rim of the slow cooker. I don't really like using crock pot liners, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, so I served this in bowls with some rolls and it was so good. Again, this is a total crowd pleaser and your family will love it. Okay, so the last recipe that I'm going to show you is pumpkin bars, and this is my quintessential fall recipe. I make this multiple times throughout the fall. I totally love pumpkin bars with cream cheese frosting. It's like one of my favorite things ever. So I will link the original recipe down below. I'm going to be cutting it in half just in this video, just so you're aware of that, just because it does make a rather large pan and I wasn't sure that we were going to eat them all. So in my bowl here, I'm putting some eggs, some canned pumpkin, some oil, and then you can either use sugar. I'm actually using a sugar substitute. I'm using the Swerve granular, but you could use you know regular sugar or Splenda or whatever you have on hand. You could probably even use brown sugar. It would be fine in this. So these are the wet ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk these up with a whisk until they are nice and combined. Connor was also wanting to help me <laughs> with d this dish as well. So I told him he could. I love having my kids help me in the kitchen. It teaches them lots of great skills and they have such fun doing it. So once the wet ingredients are mixed in, you can go ahead and add your dry ingredients. So I'm adding some flour as well as some baking powder and then some cinnamon. And then I think the last thing is just a pinch of salt. Um, and then you just want to fold that together until everything is combined. I also went ahead and added some uh, vanilla. I'm not sure if the original recipe called for that, but whenever I'm making baked goods, I always add vanilla. It's just sort of a, a habit thing there. Um, Connor was trying to ask me how to like fold this together and <laughs> he was actually doing a pretty good job. I know um, sometimes they're, they're not sure how to like fold up from the bottom of the bowl and get all of the dry ingredients incorporated, but he did a really good job. So I just helped him with that there. So this is the batter for your pumpkin bars. And once that is fully combined, you can just turn it out into a baking dish. I'm kind of using this oval baking dish, which is sort of a weird 
weird size for pumpkin bars. Um, I used to have a nine by nine glass dish, but it broke. So I need to get a new one. I'm lining the bottom of my pan with parchment paper, which I would uh, recommend even if you're using a nine by 13 pan, just because I feel like they remove from the pan a lot easier. Um, so once you spray that with cooking spray, I'm just going to spread the batter out and uh, make it so that it's as even as possible on top. And then we'll pop that in the oven to bake. Okay, so after the cake was done baking and while that was cooling, I went ahead and made the cream cheese frosting. So this is also included in the recipe, but it's very simple. The ingredients are softened cream cheese, softened butter, some vanilla, and some powdered sugar. And again, it's best to use a hand mixer or a stand mixer when you're beating up cream cheese. So I went ahead and just cut the frosting recipe also in half since I was cutting um, the cake recipe in half too but you can definitely just mix this up. If you feel like the frosting is too runny, add more powdered sugar. If you feel like it's too stiff, you can also add a little bit of milk, um, but just mix that up until it's well combined. And then once the cake was cool, I went ahead and popped that out onto a platter. You can see that it's sort of like an oval shape, which I agree is weird for uh, pumpkin bars, but that is what we did. So. I am just spreading the frosting onto the pumpkin bars with my offset spatula. I'm going to link one of these down below in the description box on Amazon. If you guys don't have one of these, it is very awesome for frosting cakes and brownies. I would totally recommend it. So here is what it looks like once it is cut into. These are the perfect pumpkin bars. They are very moist and um, cake like they have like a perfect texture and the cream cheese frosting is good as well so to recap here's what we made we made the veggie pizza appetizer we made the park city slash beef stew which is such a good recipe and then also the pumpkin bars which is my favorite fall dessert so i hope you guys enjoyed these fall recipes i hope you try them out and if you do please let me know in the comments below what you think of them also don't forget to check out jess's video which i will link down below as well thank you so much for watching and have uh, a great rest of your day i will see you in my next video bye